here with me is Sharon, with her last name Sharon. Cook. <laughs> Sharon, Sharon Cook. Cook, who is head gardener and runs uh, Andromeda Gardens. Um, over the last few weeks, we have been doing our Tai Chi sessions in the gardens, and it has been magical, <laughs> for want of a better word. Yeah. Um, so I would like uh, for Sharon to tell us a little bit about the gardens um, and how they started, etc. Right. Okay. So. The first thing I will say, these gardens are so magnificent, absolutely magnificent. Uh, in the 1950s, a lady called Iris Banneke got the land from her mum. She was a scientist, she was a plant collector. She travelled the world collecting plants, she brought them back. She created for herself a private botanical garden. And that is rare, mm -hmm. because individuals generally do not create botanical gardens. They create gardens, mm -hmm. but botanical gardens are very specific. Um, you have to have documented records of the uh, collection for the purpose of conservation, research, oh, okay. and education. And of course, display to the public. Mm -hmm. So it really is a botanical garden. Um, is, it, is it the only one in the world created by a woman? Is it the only private botanical garden in the world created by a woman? Quite possibly, and it's here in Barbados. Wow. So it really is something wow. else. Wow. Barbados in the 1950s was basically sugarcane. Mm -hmm. No history of garden creation whatsoever. So it makes her achievement even even more rare and more unique so it really is wonderful so that's what she started mm -hmm. so now what we have here is something like 500 different species of plant across 90 plant families you have 100 different species of tree it really is a remarkable collection that we need to protect really really important that we need to protect this because it's not it's not a show garden mm -hmm. it wasn't created for tourists it's so much deeper so much more important to barbados as a nation in terms of horticulture but she did so much for the locality. She did so much for St. Joseph. She employed so many people in the area, mm -hmm. you know? So we, it's, it's just a really wonderful example of our heritage in the biggest sense of the word heritage. So it's a wonderful resource for education. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful environment because we're organic. We don't use any man-made chemicals in the garden whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bees, butterflies galore. Um, Obviously, it's considered a tourist attraction, although I do not use that word. I prefer to call it a heritage site because I want people of Barbados, which is who it belongs to, to fully connect to the space. And once you call uh, Andromeda a tourist attraction, it kind of like excludes people because right. they, you know, a lot of locals are thinking, I'm not a tourist because mm -hmm. they don't understand this idea of local tourism. So mm -hmm. they think it's for somebody else. Right. But what we're trying to do is just really, really connect it to to the people of Barbados. Right. It's free for locals, of course. Um, people come and they pic pic picnic and they really, really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a really, really wonderful, gorgeous space to be. And uh, it's just worthy of protection. Yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty special. Um, I haven't, hadn't been here uh, since I was a child and I came back and, as I said. <laughs> yeah, you see in yeah, different it, eyes, it, don't yeah, you? Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So World Heart Day is coming up. Mm -hmm. next week um wednesday uh september 29th and um the theme for world heart day is use heart to connect oh um so i i know i'm springing this on you but as you ruminate on that theme use heart to connect how how can you build the gardens into that theme okay so there's a couple of things in terms of just general well-being it has been proven that being in gardens and outside spaces mm -hmm. actually makes you feel better and right. that's got to be good for the heart the other thing is a little bit funny i suppose because especially when locals come here and they walk around and if i don't warn them they come back and they're like oh, man man that was a workout <laughs> you know so in terms of just getting out there walking around the gardens uh -huh. exercising some bits are uphill some bits are downhill yeah. so what you're doing you're doing both things mm -hmm. you're, you're being good for your health good mm -hmm. for your heart you know because when i walk around my heart does get going <laughs> a little bit too but the important thing also is this connection thing mm -hmm. because you are using your heart you're walking around this garden and you're connecting you're connecting to nature, you're connecting to the plants, you're connecting to the bees, you're connecting to everything that's around. And um, yes, it's important for the heart to walk around, but it's also important in terms of connection, just to stop. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking around uphill and you've got a bit tired, you know, you're a local, it's like, I didn't realize this was so huge. Just stop, mm -hmm. there's lots of benches. Stop, relax, connect, right. and then go again. Yeah. And then stop, relax, <laughs> connect, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and finally, I'm going to ask, um, do you have any final words for us uh, 
on the garden, on your heart, on people about data, you know, your motivations in life, something. Yeah. Well, I'm a firm believer in that spaces need protection, especially when they're rare, and especially mm. when they're gardens, especially in terms of not just us and the goodness for us, but in terms of the environment and what's good for the animals, the insects, the birds, and even the organisms in the soil. I think we all have a duty to protect ourselves and to protect the environment around us. And that's what I like to see happening at Andromeda. Mm. The only way that can happen is if people come. Come, enjoy it, and let it be part of you. Mm. Right, thank you.